In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at five new features that I really like in the 2025.9 update. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. The beta or beta for 2025.9 has just been released and it's full of lots of new features, new integrations, new improvements and there's even a brand new dashboard type just chucked in there but we'll touch on that in just a second. It's crazy to see that all of these new features and improvements have all been added considering it is the summer month with lots of the developers being away on holiday and just enjoying some well earned time off. As I mentioned, the beta is now available, so if you wanted to take a sneak peek at it, or maybe you wanted to just contribute and submit some feedback on some of the new features, it is now available to download. The full release notes for the beta will also be linked in the description, so feel free to check those out, and the full release for this update will be dropping next Wednesday. So with all of that said, let's check out my first new feature. The home dashboard is a brand new experimental dashboard, and it's one of the ones that I was actually quite surprised to see during the creator call. Typically, with the way that Home Assistant have been doing things, we usually only ever see one experimental dashboard at a time, but we now currently have two. So, what is the Home Dashboard? The Home Dashboard aims to provide us with a global overview of everything that's active within our homes, and it aims to provide this all in a single view. Things are broken down into key aspects such as lights, climate, security, media players. Then you've also got areas, and then if you do have any active widgets like weather or energy, then these get displayed on the bottom. In terms of customization, this dashboard is currently quite limited and at the time of recording this video, I think the only things you can actually customize is you can actually add some features to the top of the page and these are just things that you want to display on the page for a kind of quick access type thing. I did hear the developer say that these favorites are going to be worked on in some future updates and they plan on adding these so that if it's something that you do typically say seven o'clock every night you always click something on the dashboard then it will suggest these as favorites so we're going to get that kind of thing in these dashboards at a future point maybe don't hold me to that just in case they don't actually add that but it's it's something that's been spoken about <laughs> It's going to be interesting to see what happens with this dashboard because over the next few releases it is going to get more customization and more features and as one of Home Assistant's goals for the year they are aiming to improve dashboard creation and the ability to actually customize and modify dashboards so let's see what happens. If we're staying on topic then with customization we've got my second feature which is some brand new features for tile card features. Tile card features are those little extra bits that you can add whenever you're customizing your tile cards and in this release we're getting a whole bunch of new ones. In the release we're getting features for graphs, fans, valve positions, buttons and even a date time setter. So if you've ever wanted to be able to visualize a graph or oscillate a fan or set a water valve position using a tile card then you can do all of that stuff now. It's great to see all of these new additions and features come into tile cards and it's great to just see tile cards just keep evolving and just keep iterating over time. Moving on then to my third new feature and this one's probably the most noticeable within the update and it's probably also my favorite feature of the update but it's a brand new view for the automation editor. Over the last few months the automation editor has received a few different rounds of editing it's received changes to the if then when do approach, it's received changes to the collapsible forms, it's had drag and drop, it's had building blocks, but in this release all of those things are now being represented and displayed in a different manner. If you open up the automation editor and choose to create a new automation, then the new changes aren't instantly apparent. If you select to add a trigger, a condition or an action, then the new change will instantly become apparent. As soon as you choose to add one of these options, you'll be greeted with this new split view. In the split view, the different controls that you're going to be assigning, so your triggers, conditions and actions, those will all be visible on the left hand side. Then on the right hand side in this new split panel, you'll be able to see all of the different devices or the different types that you're actually trying to set. This new approach is definitely much cleaner and it's definitely clearer to actually what's happening and what's going on. Having used this for just a couple of days, I definitely do prefer this new approach. It's much better than the old form style where you can't see where you are and you just expand and collapse in a whole bunch of different form elements. So split view is definitely the way to go. Some of the other subtle changes that have been brought about with this new design change are the little edge lines that appear which just help you distinguish the different parts of the automation. You also have clear highlighting around the section that you're currently working on. So for example, if you're in triggers, then triggers will be highlighted in blue and the section to the right will also be highlighted in blue, indicating that you're in that section. 
This one's definitely different, but it is one that I prefer. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you prefer the old form style layout or is split view something that you're interested in? Let me know what your thoughts are on this in the comments below. Carrying on then with feature four, and we've got some brand new voice features from our resident home assistant voice guy, Mike. Mike's been working away at a bunch of quality of life improvements for Home Assistant Voice and some of the notable ones are things like fuzzy matching for the default intent handler, built-in intent for controlling the volume of active media players and built-in intent for controlling fans. What's nice about all these improvements is that on their own they are just little individual pieces but when these little pieces add up it's just giving us more and more for Home Assistant Voice and it's just progressing voice just that little bit more. Wrapping this up then with feature number five and we've got storage insights. The storage page is one of those pages that's just sat there for a long time with no love and no attention. Nobody ever visits it and when they do, the only things that you can see are two little bars. One bar is gonna tell you how much storage you've used and the other bar is gonna tell you your disk health. Well, with this update, that has changed and the storage page has finally got some love. It's also got a big needed lick of paint and this is now what it looks like. If you now check out the storage page, you'll see that the disk metric has indeed received a lick of paint. In this new view, you'll be able to see a breakdown of the storage. It's also color coded for ease, so you'll be able to see what to use in the storage and where and how it's being used. Just having that little bit of colour and being able to see that breakdown just makes it so much more usable and I'd love to see this actually be usable in a card so you could display it on a dashboard and I'd love to see some of the other metrics in Home Assistant get a little facelift just like this has. And there we go guys, that's been a quick look at five of the new features that I've really liked in the update. If you have enjoyed this video and found it interesting then don't forget to drop me a like and if you aren't already hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell and you'll be alerted to any future video that I do. As always a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members and if you are interested in helping support my channel which in turn allows me to create content like this then you'll find links to all the places that you can go to support me all in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.